afternoon everybody, welcome back to another episode of Aston Dave. Um, today I'll be giving my opinion on the West Ham game and a couple of bits of news that have come up recently um, and also I'm going to throw in some clips of the playoff final as well um, just because I want to get everybody going for the game against West Ham and I think we could all do a little bit of cheering up after the crap game well against Crystal Palace and the uh, lack of no means for England uh, the other day nor Tom Eaton. Anyway, moving on. Um, I heard today on Twitter that... Um, What's his name? Roberto Di Matteo was uh, apparently pissed off that his uh, tenure at Villa was cut short uh, by Dr. Tony Zhao. Um, that might have something to do with the fact that he was a crap manager and we hadn't actually done anything when he was there. I never really rated the guy. He's never done anything. So this bit of news, I think, was pointless. I think it was just the fact he wanted to get back into the limelight because uh, Roberto Di Matteo is, um, well, how can I put it, annoying. Uh, and I've never really liked the guy at all. Um, so that's the first bit. Secondly, I heard today that um, Villa may be going back in for Axel Tanzibi um, in January. Um, Alan Hutton has come out and said that he's surprised the amount of lack of game time that he's got at Manchester United. Um, and I think Axel would be a more welcomed uh, addition to Villa. Um, we've got some amazing... Look at that, something happened with the camera there. I have no idea what happened. Anyway, so, um, Axel Tenzibi, um, again, I think we've got some brilliant defence anyway. Um, Mingzi, House, um, Engels, you know, they're just to name a few. Konza, brilliant player, coming against Crew. Um, I think he's going to be a brilliant addition to the team. Tenzibi, I think we'll just shore it up um, with the fact that um, sometimes our defence can be a little bit lackadaisy. Um, and I think he does give a big sort of boost in the right direction for youth football and the fact that it's, well, it's Axel Tanzi and I think he's a brilliant player anyway. Anyway, so another bit of financial news. Apparently the owners of the Villa are going to be injecting a, around about 100 billion back into the club. So this might make it a little bit easier for us to, um, well, do more financial stuff, I guess, more like sort of getting players or shoring up contracts. Um, but it just goes to show that the Villa are constantly putting money into the team. So that was a bit of financial news I heard today. Um, so it's also good to know that the owners have still got that faith and have still got the passion for the club as well, going in the right direction, putting money into the club as well. So um, also as well, I'm going to move on to the West Ham game. Um, Mike, I've got, um, I have got a thought that um, the game is going to be very, well, not one-sided. I think it's going to be a very open, free-flowing game. I think West, I've, I've said from the start, West Ham are a very good team. They've got some decent players. They've made good additions to the team this year. Um, I do believe they are one of the most underrated teams in the Premier League. Um, so shoot me if you want. You know, that's my opinion. I've always had that opinion of the West Ham. Um, also because they're only about an hour away from where I live. So um, they literally are on the news all the time. Uh, they're, they're everywhere. So even the fans, you can't escape the fans, they're everywhere. But moving forward, I think the tactic against West Ham is to get at them easy. Just pummel them. Try and get some more. Try and get the play down the right flank, our right flank, because I think if we can put more pressure onto the left winger and the left back, which would be Arthur Matiaku, I do believe, um, I think he's prone to making mistakes that will lead to uh, you know some decent play. So if we have Freddie Gilbert playing, he hopefully will get around the back, get a decent ball into the box, or even just get into the box and have a crack at goal. Um, secondly, as well, we've got to stop the threat of. Philippe Anderson, Sebastian Haller, um, and controlling the middle of the park would either be Declan Rice or Mark Noble. They're the kind of players I think we need to be targeting to stop the play. I think we need to sort of neutralise their play in the middle of the park, in the heart of the field, and then we can push forward and get at them from there. Uh, never, nevertheless, Villa going forward, I think on the left, for the fact that Trezeguet is suspended, 
a lot of people have been saying online they want to go for a uh, sort of a weird midfield, like either uh, Marvelous in the middle, uh, Marvelous uh, with Jota, um, Grealish and McGinn. I think maybe we should go for El Ghazi. El Ghazi is a proven winger. I think he's a, I think he's fantastic. I've always liked El Ghazi. Even when he had his really rough patch at the beginning, he wasn't playing too well, but I still had faith in him, and he did come good, and he's a cracking player. Um, so I think El Ghazi on the left, right we should have Jota, in the middle, McGinn and Grealish. Um, so I think that would be a good fit. I think that would be quite a good midfield because you've got the wing play, you've got the steam engine in the middle, and you've also got Grealish who can draw the fouls and draw players to him. So I think with the fact he's got a lot of, you know, good bit of talent on him, I think that might draw Mark Noble to sit on him. And Mark Noble's not got the legs anymore um, to turn with Jack. And he might force him into silly errors. Um, so that's my thought. Um, that's me as a Villa fan. I have got a clip. My friend uh, Steve Games did give his sort of opinion. We did this on the way back from work. So check out my clip now. Hi guys, I'm here with Steve Games. He's going to give his prediction on the Villa versus West Ham game. He's an Arsenal fan, so please be nice to him. But Steve, it, what do you think the result is going to be? Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 two, two Villa. Oh. 2-0 Villa. We are on the way back from work, so we have had our day's work. Well, he has. I've been driving. But, two, yeah. So he's 2 nil Villa. a bit dehydrated. That's a good result, I think. Um, I personally think West Ham are going to be very attacking. But this is coming from an Arsenal fan who sees decent football pretty much every week. So to say 2-0 Villa, I think it's a good result. But other than that, I'm going to give my result after this. Right, so that was the opinion of me and Steve Games. Um, as you saw, I didn't give my score opinion. Um, I'm leaving that till now. And I think uh, I am going to go for a 2-2. Um, I will never bet against Villa. Uh, I'll never say Villa are going to lose like 6 0. That's not the case. That's when we play Man City. Uh, I think, think I'm going to go 2 2. I think we're going to be pushing too much and leave ourselves open at the back. Um, I think Mingzi's going to have a lot of work to do in the case of um, neutralising Haller. Uh, I think our fullback's going to have a lot of work trying to keep Felipe Anderson at bay. Um, but I think the fact that they're going to be pushing forward, and if I get the news correctly, it looks like Pellegrini is going to start with uh, four nail, uh, four nails, four nails, five nails, four nails. I don't know what his name is. I think his brother's called five or six nails, but we'll go with four nails. I think he's maybe going to be going with him. So that's lack of experience and youth for West Ham, but they have got the quality to back it up. Um, so I think we need to be a little bit. Cautious going forward. I think I think Wes is going to get off the mark again. I think the fact he got his goal against Everton, I think it's given him a bit of you know life to 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 want to get more goals. But um, also, I do believe I reckon John McGinn's going to get. I do believe that John McGinn is going to steamroll his way through the middle of the park, and uh, I think he's going to get a goal. I think it's going to be a a tough game. I think it's going to be a very evenly matched game, um, but. Again, that is my opinion. Um, guys, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to me, I'm going to make this a match day thing as well on the West Ham game. So I'm going to get some clips of the game. Uh, I'm also going to get some clips from outside as well. I'm looking to get people involved. So do comment, subscribe, notify yourself. I'm trying to make this a bit bigger and trying to get more news in. This was a little bit, um, how can I say, impromptu. I wasn't going to do this until tomorrow. Um, but I thought if I do it now, it gives you guys more of a chance over the weekend to do what you want to do rather than watching my face on your phone or your laptop or your computer or your telly. Um, this damn stand. I've got a new stand for my phone so I can do these little video things. And it's Bluetooth. It turns off and turns on and then it jolts and turns. So a lot of editing had to be done. But anyway. Uh, I'm doing this with ABFC 12th Man. The Facebook page is in the comments below. Um, also as well, do check out the Aston Villa YouTube channel as well. Um, they've got some fantastic clips and news uh, of stuff that's happening. But as I said before, I'm going to put some clips on of the playoff final uh, from where I was with my dad. Uh, we both went to the final. Um, so I'm going to put them on there as well. Um, just to kind of get us buzzing 
ready for the game on Monday because we've got a whole weekend to go about no but no Villa football. But thank God the football is back because I cannot stand international breaks. I can't stand international football. I'm so glad our club is back playing. So, peace up the Villa. Here are some clips of my day at Wembley with my dad winning the championship. Peace.